All right, guys, welcome back to the video. So in this one, we're gonna be talking about what sharpening stones you need to keep your hand tools nice and razor sharp. So what's probably happened is you've brought your new hand tools home, you use them for a little bit, and you're realizing that the edges are getting very dull, and you're trying to figure out what you need to buy in order to get those edges sharpened up. So this is not gonna be an in-depth look at my whole sharpening system. We're gonna go cover that in a different video, just because there's a lot of other stuff that goes into it, and this in and of itself is already going to be a highly detailed video, just talking about what stones you need, because there is a lot of information involved in what kind of stones you wanna buy. And so to start this off, I wanna talk about how I use my hand tools in my shop. Now, if you guys haven't heard about this, the way that I approach my woodworking is with a hybrid approach. And so the idea behind this approach is that you're mainly using machinery to do all of your kind of brute forcing work. And then you use your hand tools for all your, you know, refined work, all your really, you know, touching up joinery, doing all the super accurate stuff. And so in most cases, when I need a hand tool, I need it to be razor sharp and I need it to be just ready to go. And if I have to sharpen it, I don't want it to take a long time. Now, those are the two biggest things that have shaped what stones I've, I've gone through and purchased here. Because over the few years that I've been woodworking, I've gone through and tried different things, trying to figure out what works best for me. Uh, and, and this is kind of what I've settled on. And I'll be completely honest, this is the exact same setup that I know that a lot of the you know, really professional woodworkers use. And so this is just a bucket of water that I keep all my stones in to keep them nice and wet so they're always ready to go. And by saying that, you guys can probably guess that these are water stones. So first off, let's talk about different stone compositions. So there's basically three different types of sharpening stones on the market. The ones that I've got here are water stones. So you're going to use water or Windex, you know, some water-based uh, fluid to keep the stones nice and wet and that will help keep the sharpening nice and smooth. So I always keep them in a tub of water like this. This tub is getting kind of empty right now. It's only about half full, but there's still plenty of water in there to soak up into the stones to keep them nice and wet. That way, when I want to sharpen, they're nice. They're already ready to go. If you don't want to store your water stones in a tub of water like this, you just want to keep them dry. All you have to do when you want to use them is just soak them for two or three minutes before you start cutting. That'll just make sure that the water is fully absorbed into the stone and it's ready to go. Another type of stone is oil stones. So the big difference between water stones and oil stones is that you're going to use oil on the oil stones and you cannot mix the two. If you're using water stones, you want to stick purely with water stones. If you're using oil stones, you want to stick purely with oil stones. Because the trick is if you start on an oil stone, and then move to a water stone after that, there's, good, there's a good chance there's gonna be some of that oil still on your cutting edge. So when you go to sharpen it on your water stone, you're gonna get that, you're gonna get that oil into that water stone. It's gonna clog up that water stone and ruin it. Because I don't particularly understand what the chemical makeup of these different stones is, but all I know is that there is a big difference between them. Because if you try to use water on an oil stone, it's not gonna work. If you try to use oil on a water stone, it's also not gonna work properly and you're gonna ruin that stone. So it's very important before you do anything, if, when you're buying your stones, you need to make sure you know whether or not it's a water stone or an oil stone. In most cases, water stones are what you're gonna be able to buy. Now, the only reason that some people recommend oil stones is because they're really, really cheap. Now, I haven't been able to find a good explanation as to why they're so cheap, but all I can tell you is that they're very cheap. Now, I will say that I did try oil stones when I first got into it, because for me, sharpening with oil makes a lot more sense than water, because all I know about water and metal is that water causes metal to rust. So I wanted to try and avoid that, and I thought by working with oil, it might be a little bit better. Now, the big problem that I found with oil stones is that they are very, very slow to cut and sharpen, which is kind of an annoying thing you know even if you get even with the most aggressive one that I bought I don't actually remember the ones that I had I had a set of three of them uh, but I, I don't remember what grits I had they were able to get my edges nice and sharp but it just took a long long time plus I had the downside of I would end up getting oil everywhere the blade was covered in oil and I had to wipe it off which which got my rags all oily all that kind of stuff it was just a little bit of a nightmare then when I moved over to water stones water stones are super easy you pour some water on them you'd leave them in a bath of water like this so they're, so they're just always ready to go and water is not anything you have to worry about if you get a little bit of water on your hands it's not that big of a deal whereas the oil you know again for some people that getting that little bit of that oil in your hands can be kind of annoying the third type of sharpening stone that you can buy is diamond stones now I do actually have a diamond stone right here but we're going to talk about specifically what I use this one for in a little bit here the trick with diamond stones is that they are very expensive but they have one key benefit and that is that they don't really wear out so both water stones and oil stones over time are going to wear out you're constantly removing material from them they're going to wear out whereas a diamond stone is made up of a bunch of little diamonds that are cutting the edge and those diamonds are going to last a super long time but because of that diamond stones are also the most expensive option so you're going to be paying a ton of money up front for that stone that's going to last a very long time now the one downside to diamond stones is that they're a lot like oil stones and that they don't cut very quickly they're a very very slow cutting method but it is nice that they don't wear out very quickly so if you don't want to be going out and buying new water stones every few years 
then a diamond stone is a perfectly good option because it'll probably last you for most of your woodworking career. You might have to replace, you might have to get a new one, you know, every five, 10 years, something like that. I honestly don't know how long they last. I just know that they last a super long time, but you're gonna kind of pay for that every time you have to go back to your sharpening station because it's gonna take you more and more time to get those blades nice and sharp. And so that brings it all back to why you want water stones because water stones are the fastest method for sharpening. They're a nice in-between price. So they're not as expensive as say a diamond stone, but they also sharpen a lot faster than an oil stone. So they're, ni they're a nice in-between and they're kind of readily available. You can find them at pretty much any you know home center and that. Uh, but also any woodworking store is going to have a good selection of them. So when you actually start looking into water stones, there's a couple different kinds. There's ceramic and there's just normal. Both of these are basically interchangeable. The only big difference here is that ceramic do last a little bit longer, but they are going to be more expensive. Again, they both operate basically the same way, but ceramic it just lasts a little bit longer. And so again, if you want to go for a water stone that's going to last a little bit longer and, you, and you're able to afford those more expensive stones, then I would always recommend going with ceramic stones. Now, the stones that I specifically use are Pride Abrasive uh, ceramic water stones. And you can pick them up at Lee Valley. They're about $100 a stone, so they are a fairly expensive option, but they're definitely not the most expensive ceramic water stones on the market. There are a bunch of other brands that are much more expensive. So these ones I found are kind of a nice middle Ground. They're expensive enough that they work really well and you know I've had I have absolutely no complaints about these stones and I've been using them for about three years now. And so when we go through the stones that I actually have here I currently have uh, three of these stones. All right and so these are all the stones that I use. So the one on the bottom here is a thousand grit. So all the way through this stone it's, it's a thousand grit. Uh, the middle one here is a combination 3,000 and 8,000 grit stone. Now, what's really nice about these Pride Abrasive stones is that you can buy these combination ones. So these top two are the first ones that I bought and I'm still working through them. They've just lasted a long enough time. Uh, and it was really nice to kind of figure out what I wanted to work with. Uh, before I actually had to go out and buy the full stones. And so this last stone on the top here was originally a thousand grit on the top and then 6,000 grit on the opposite side. Now, as you can see, the thousand grit on this side is completely worn out, hence why I had to go out and buy this thousand grit stone that's on the bottom here. So right off the bat, I'm gonna eliminate this stone on the top here just purely because I don't really use this 6,000 grit side, which we're gonna talk about in just a second here. So the only stones that I use for my sharpening is the 1,000 grit, 3,000 grit, and 8,000 grit. And this is all I found that I actually needed. And like I said, this, this 3000 grit, 8000 grit st combination stone is the first one that I ever bought of these Pride Abrasive ceramics. Uh, and this 1000 grit one is the second one I bought after I wore out the first side of that other stone there. And so these are basically the three grits that you're gonna need. Now, the one thing I will say is that the 3000 grit, I would preferably exchange it for a 4000 grit. The only reason I'm using the 3000 grit here is just purely because it's attached to this other stone and it was just the combination that I could buy. Uh, I wasn't able to buy a combination with the 4000 grit because that is preferably what you would use. And so to break it down nice and simply, those are the three grits you're gonna to wanna to buy. You're gonna want a 1000 grit, 4000 or 3000 grit, either one, they're basically interchangeable, uh, and then an 8000 grit. Because the idea here is that the 1000 grit is gonna remove the original edge. So that when the edge of your hand plane or chisel becomes dull, what's happened is that that sharp edge is broken away or you'll know, or it'll have chips in it, stuff like that. So on the 1000 grit stone, this is gonna remove a lot of material very quickly. And so you're gonna be able to remove any chips or nicks in those blades very quickly with that 1000 grit stone. The in-between stone, so whether it's 3000 or 4000, is just meant to refine that edge. Now, if you want it razor sharp, which again, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, which is really important to me, you're gonna wanna hit it with that 8000 grit stone. Because the 8000 grit stone is where it really transforms from a pretty good cutting edge to a razor sharp cutting edge. Uh, to the point where you can actually shave the hairs off your arm. So that 8,000 grit stone is where you're gonna make the real difference. Now with these three water stones that I recommend you buy, you're also gonna wanna get a coarse grit diamond stone. Now I never use this stone for sharpening my blades because like I mentioned, it's not really useful. It's super slow compared to the 1,000 grit water stone uh, and overall it's just not the most useful thing in the world. But what it is good for is that it stays perfectly flat because what will happen with each of these water stones as you're sharpening your blades, you'll slowly start to create a concave shape here. So if you're sharpening like a chisel and you're just sticking to one side, you're gonna be removing material from the stone on one side. So that's where you need the diamond stone to come back in and flatten this off. Because of the way that they're manufactured, they stay perfectly flat. They will always be perfectly flat. And so they make really good truing stones. So just simply by picking up one of these coarse diamond stones, you can use that to flatten all of your water stones. And so as you can see here, it's a very basic, very simple setup. All you need is three different stones 
uh, and they'll last you a very long time. And so it really is that simple. Sharpening is not something that should be an overly complex thing because you're gonna have to do it all the time. So if you can simplify it to just needing those three different grits and you can combine two of them into one stone, it really just makes your life easy because you can always have these stones ready to go. And so as a kind of a final bonus tip, you're gonna wanna get a strop as well. So this is not really a stone per se, but it is still a form of sharpening. Because after you finish off sharpening on that 8,000 grit stone, you're still going to need to do some final sharpening. Now I've seen a lot of woodworkers continue on past 8,000 grit and go, you know, go up to 12,000, uh, 20,000, whatever. You can, you can just keep sharpening if you really wanted to, but you can also kind of cheat and go to strop straight after 8,000 grit and still get a razor sharp edge. So what the strop does is it's basically just a paste compound with either metal or glass particles in it that help refine that edge even further. So all it does is it just polishes up that edge just as much as it possibly can and helps make up for any inconsistencies in that 8,000 grit stone. So it's just a really good final step to that sharpening system and they're not expensive. In fact, I picked up this little strop set which was the, co the compound and this piece of leather off Amazon for like 10, 12 bucks, something like that. And then I just have it sitting on a piece of MDF so it stays nice and flat. And again, it's super cheap and makes a massive difference to the sharpness of your tools. You can go from having a very sharp tool to a razor sharp tool, which makes a massive difference when you're trying to use it in your woodworking. So links to all these items will be in the description down below. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video and I'll be happy to try and answer it the best I can. But as always guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.